afternoon, Mele Kaliki Maka, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays to everyone who is watching in Facebook land, online, or wherever you are on planet Earth. Pikachu is going to continue his human trafficking report, which I started in the Hawaiian Night Town Hall meeting with Darius Kila, Senator Miley Shimabukuro, and Cedric Gates to represent the West Side. And they cut me off short because I only had two minutes to explain everything I had to say in my handy dandy notebook. But Darius Kila from Nanakuli said I talk too fast, and I'm telling him you need to, you write too slow and your ears are too slow because obviously you cannot download everything I didn't say in two minutes or less, which is a trap. If you've never been to the crop before, what happened? So, let me continue what's happening. So, with human trafficking and drug smuggling, there are two different crimes occurring. Human trafficking is a fancy word for extortion. They're extorting you, they're extorting me from Dole Pineapple, Sugar King Pineapple. We have the treaties from Pearl Harbor when they didn't want to pay, meaning the Americans, U.S. citizens, they don't want to pay the import export tax, which should be coming to the kingdom. So, you and me are being extorted for our land, water, natural resources by a DLNR, Dole Care, and all these pendejos. Number two, other crime is smuggling. Smuggling occurs when you cross different country borders. For example, Maui County to Oahu County, China to Hawaii, Japan to Hawaii, California to Hawaii, Colombia to Hawaii, and you're smuggling drugs, weapons, fentanyl, and other peculiars, including humans. Now, how do you get past them? Which is the phenomenal question, which blows my mind, because you can watch this smuggling occur with National Geographic, How to Catch a Smuggler, GFK is doing a great job, LAX catch a lot of counterfeit knockoffs, Nyman's got a huge cocaine problem, and you can see that the people behind uh, CBP, Customs Border Patrol, are doing a phenomenal job to stop the drugs. However, you don't hear anything in the Hawaiian Islands, I don't know how they're getting the fentanyl, fentanyl in, we've been told on the streets that they're smuggling it in through the military, they're getting the local cops to go pick up the drug shipments from the planes, whether it's CIA or military, and then they bring the drugs back to the local dealers and distribute it that way. One of the names we came across is the Kahena Whore on the Big Island, which is bringing a lot of fentanyl. So if you care about your kids, you know, some of them are lacing their cocaine and other opioids with fentanyl, which is a cheap derivative of opium. They can't even afford the real opium anymore or the real coke, which is Colombia is cheap, Mexico is cheap, and they can't even handle it anymore. So those are the two major crimes occurring. Now, when I went to the one I found on me, I told them my four automatic solutions. Number one, we need a better aftercare program to what happens when we rescue children from unfortunate circumstances. You need to separate the boys and the girls. They cannot stay together, otherwise they're going to pull in, go to to bang bang. You got druggy babies. We got different dealers. We got different temptresses. We got different madams. We got different boys. And they're all looking on the hook. So you have to separate the boys versus the girls. And in stable facilities. Oh, Lana Pua only does girls, 17 and under. And if you got a six-year-old or people underage, they're not going to take them in for residency. So it gets really complicated. So we need a facility for the boys. We need a facility for the girls. We need it on all the islands. Legislature, which is coming up January 18th. Number two, I told them we need more resources for people who do rescue ops, aftercare program, and who's actually going to. Or rescue the kids and take care of them. So, that example, on the Big Island in Kona, the average house for human trafficking is 7 to 12 kids. So, even if we rescue the kids, I do not have a facility for 7 to 12 kids who've been human trafficked, raped, got HPV, STD, who knows what all kind of shit, and things are screwed up in their head. You need more resources. The U.S. government is only offering $1 million for Native Hawaiians so with human trafficking, but $1 million is not enough. That's not enough for a hospital, that's not enough for insurance, that's not enough for the lawsuits that are going to come, and who knows what kind of Africa means for life. All right? Number three, I told the Native Hawaiian chair, Manny Shimbukuro, Davis Kila, and Sid Gates, that we also need to help push the aerial sellers bill, because Governor Ike said that was unconstitutional for foster parents, meaning some Lehua Kalua, who are evil, put area in dog cages, and we're still having a hard time contacting the sisters throughout this process. It's been over a year, but they don't want the victims to come forward to see Uncle Pikachu get interviewed because we're going to lay out the truth, and the kids already know what's been happening, and they're covering it up for the judges, the police, the Koopunas, Mike Minsky, Kealohas, Kaneshiros, the prosecuting officers, the dirty judges. You know, it's all in cahoots. And when we talked to Steve Alm, the prosecuting attorney for Honolulu, when he had his Heaven Eva Beach Town Hall meeting with Kurt Favela, they had a live. So I asked them, what are you going to do about the evil villains? You have to punish the evil villains. Otherwise, you're going to take their operation from this house 
shut it down and go move operations to the next house and keep on running. You're never going to win this war. It's like Sons of the Art of War. You got to know your enemy and know yourself so you don't lose this war and, you keep, and you're not chasing all these tail tailings. I'm aiming for the head of the snake, which points to me to the Roman Vatican Church, which I'll get into. So number four, we have to also hold these people accountable. Now, I think that we've gone over two minutes. There's no way I can explain everything for someone brand new who's never been through this stuff to understand what the hell is going down, what's the problem, what's the process, what you've been through, what do we got to go through in case my son, daughter, niece, nephew, grandkid goes through the process. They don't explain this shit to you. I realize I'm the only one explaining this to you directly. And that's why we're filming on Facebook, which I'll put on YouTube, which is very unfortunate because I do have a, we do have some cases going on. And what's supposed to happen, you have a Missing Child Center for Hawaii. This is the MCCU, the Missing Child Center Coordinator for Hawaii. Her name is Amanda Leonard. She is supposed to be the one who is supposed to contact and coordinate between the different agencies, FBI, CIA, DEA, Hawaiian Kingdom Task Force, to help rescue children who are missing. Now, when you go to their website, there's only like so many kids, less than 50. They still have aerial sellers missing, Benjamin Raposa, well, we know they're all 86. They're not telling the whole truth. So when you call their numbers, imagine you're a kid that you've been trafficked or extorted or smuggled, and you call this number for help, nobody picks up their phone. There's nobody there. It goes to a voicemail messing machine, and when you call the Attorney General's office, they don't even, they haven't even heard of Amanda Leonard. So if you know of Amanda Leonard, she made herself own famous with Operation Cross Country when the FBI said that they're going to help go with this nationwide sweep and, uh, and rescue all these victims. Now, they stole yours truly's intel when I called the FBI 911 and I have the records for this stuff. So I put everything on TV, on Olalo, and I got my handy dandy Blue's Clues notebook here. Well, then they lied to the public, Christy Tamashiro was the one who put the news blast out there, and they said, you're supposed to call the MCCU, the Missing Child Center for Hawaii, MCCH. And she's on the Attorney General's office under Holly T. Shikata. And they wonder why Pikachu got a problem with these people. It's because you're not doing your freaking job. You're supposed to be the one coordinating between all the interagencies and making all this stuff go down, but you don't. And we can talk to CFS, CWS, which is uberly corrupt. And some of you people are just trying to protect your job. You're not really doing what's wrong for the right for the KK because we have to deal with human trafficking, drug smugglers, we're dealing with the Koopunas, Hell's Angels, different mafia families from the KGB, Sinaloa Cartel, all these other cartels, family members, members, Ukraine, blah 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 blah. And that's why I asked for four things for them to hold them accountable, which I went to the legislature. We need better aftercare service, we need resources for rescue operations. Push the aerial sellers bill so we can hold these people accountable, and, and that was number four. Now, what I got to mention, but we didn't get to go through it all, is that during the holiday season, we just passed Christmas, uh, we went through Halloween and New Year's. The evil villains do not worship God or Jesus. They worship Satan, Baal, Moloch, and other people. So they are not in the same realm as some of you people who go to church every Sunday. Unless you're the Pope, Francis, because that's a different story. The Catholics have been behind the scenes and they've been financing a lot of these services. So if you didn't know, some people are in lawsuits like Pope Services, which is run by the Roman Catholic Vatican Church. IHS is run by the Roman Catholic Vatican Church. CWS, Child Welfare Services, under the Department of Human Services. So the more you try to dig into these people, there's always some kind of corporate shell to protect them. But what breaks the corporate veil is fraud. Any type of fraud breaks the corporate veil. If you study any Las Vegas corporations, Nevada corporations, they c cannot protect you if you're breaking the law. Which is why we have to hold all of these people accountable. Now there's three bad guys that you should take a note of when you watch this video. You should avoid your kids, because this is the number one pimpress. Her name is Michelle Kobayashi. She's got her daughter up here. You can find her on Facebook. She's been through all these programs, hanging out with Hope Services and all these things. And she's the Ghislaine Maxwell of the Hawaiian Islands. Pipping out kids, recruiting them, dolling them up, getting their hair done, nails done. And it's all a cover front for selling themselves, drugs, and other things. Now, you can tell when they've been changed and groomed because they start getting tattoos. They start getting marked. If you didn't know the Chinese triad, they mark them uh, with a flower rose right above their belly button. We got roses from the locals, like big, big roses, not tiny roses, it's just it's like big roses on their neck, on their bodies. So you can see some of these girls got marked. And some of them have gone beyond it, some of them are still in it, but some of them like to be in it. Like this has not ended, the game has gone for a long time. And number two name is Paul Sula. 
So Paul Sula is in charge of selling ayahuasca, part of the human trafficking, selling kids, cakey. He got caught coming out of the greenhouse, Big Island Candies with the green light. And the FBI is the one they said they busted the Operation Cross Country in his house. They didn't say the name, they said Oahu, but that was a blatant lie. So obviously putting political subterfuge on the media, on to you guys, the public, which is a goddamn shame because we're the only Native Hawaiian organization under the U.S. Department of Interior allowed to investigate human trafficking and drug smuggling. You can check it out at kpo.org forward slash hkktf. All right, and the last person name is Timothy Williams. This is a Popola guy who says he's a preacher out of the church in Big Island, which is right across from the house with Big Island candies in Hilo. This is a church in blue on the second floor. We've been told that he's been raping kids on that second floor above the church where there's showers and stuff. A lot of bad stuff goes down. Now, when you try to approach this guy, he's actually married to an officer Shibuya's daughter in Hilo. And how come the officer can't bust him? You know, there's a lot of dirty stuff that people don't really explain to Pikachu or to you. And the only reason I'm alive to tell you this stuff is because of these glasses. So I've been told the only reason why I'm not dead yet is because who wants to make Pikachu a martyr? Who's going to kill Pokemon? Right? Everyone can talk about in the streets, the government, the state, the Fed, the CIA, DA, and I tag all of you to, to get some feedback to see what's going down. So you have to make sure your kids avoid these people. Avoid the Michelle Kobayashi, who's no more dangerous. Avoid Paul Sula, who's going to drug, drug up your kids with ayahuasca and who knows what. And Timothy Williams. They're all part of the same game and they're definitely buddies and they know each other. The ironic thing is, Mitch Roth knows these, knows these people as well, the mayor of Big Island. So I'm talking about Big Island people right now. And that's where the force has led me to. Now, we still got issues here on Oahu. Where I'm currently filming from where the Kapuna Council has their meeting. If you notice, it's this infamous tree. A lot of these people are running cover. So they have the 501c3 organizations. They might be saying the, the Catholic Church. They might be running the Hawaiian Sanctuary, some kind of derivative of a nonprofit. Now, if you didn't know anything, nonprofits do not pay GET tax or state tax to the state. They only go to the IRS. So whatever they can write off there, 100% writing off. And then people say they don't have jurisdiction and they run this whole cover of um, under religion. So it gets complicated when you're digging in, but you have to go through because Hope Services, one of these guilty companies, is being sued and is controlled by the Roman Vatican Church. Now, from the grapevine coconut wireless, they tried to pay out people, but it's not enough. And even if they offered you $5 billion, that's kind of money you're not going to spend because they can pay less than that just to offer you. And you never get to spend, spend the money and get the money back. So you got to watch out how you play the game with these evil villains because it's a geographical solution is what they say. There's a group called SNAP, not the food stamp program, but those who are survivors against the abusive priests who've been raping kids for a long time. And what they do from the Pope, we heard from Pope John II, uh, and even before Pope Francis was hired in, because Pope John II got assassinated, you know, almost assassinated, is that they remove them from Canada when they get caught and they move them to like East Timor, from East Timor they go to you know, China, Africa, and some weird places. And if you didn't know, if you're married in the Catholic religion, you don't get to go higher. The max you can become is a deacon. After a deacon is a you know priest, deacon, bishop, cardinal, and then the pope. So a lot of this evil pedophile in America has been going. And the Vatican, you might say it's a religion, it's its own independent country. It has its own everything. It's the world's smallest independent country running all this gumbo games. Why do you recognize that country, not the Hawaiian Kingdom? I have no clue. Right now, they're fighting Ukraine, who's not under the United Nations. Just like the Hawaiian Kingdom, but we're willing, willing to go to war and fight an ally in Russia versus actually be accountable to what's going down with Hunter Biden was doing drugs, cocaine, all kind of shit, and was paid off by the Ukrainian government to run with their companies. And that's Joe Biden's son. Like, this is just corrupt beyond belief. Now, how does this tie in? to the local gang so we've been told that other kids have been coming in and that they've been trafficked from houses in ever beach run by the hell's angels area i heard it's in the ocean point i didn't get a specific address yet but you can tell when they wear the their gear their branding that if we got the hell's angels logo that's one scouter who's running that area they've got different houses obviously all over now there's a back history with the Hells Angels, Koapuna, and Vowels. When Uncle Wayne used to run Koapuna, they had things a little more under control with Uncle Larry and Nihau. 
But after things swapped hands and Napoleon passed away, the son took over and then they started making deals. So the Vagos left during that time. Now you got Paul Poon and Hell's Angels who's running all the drug drug runs with the biker gangs. That's who's running it, but we heard the goodness because someone's got to finance, someone's got to back you up, and that comes back to the Roman Vatican Church. Because we know there's no angels in hell. That's an oxymoron. And obviously you'd be a devil or a demon because obviously you're sacrificing children. Now what I told you in the why night time how meaning is that if you didn't know the numbers, they're sacrificing our children to have sex with minors. Seven to twelve K they're willing to spend to have sex with a minor. And more to go even more over during satanic calendar days, holidays, winter solstice, Christmas, obviously New Year's is coming up. Uh, what they want is there's this chick who comes from Maui. She's a woman. Now she's a witch because she comes she floats over to the Big Island during special events, and she was there on the Big Island, and they sacrificed a young woman. They want some 15 to 17 years age, a virgin. And because of the heat we brought into Hilo, they were trying to hide some stuff. And it, was, it would happen at the, the old Mayhem Church, is where the sacrifice happened. What I've been told is that they kidnap these women, these girls, hang them upside down for at least a day, they gotta get all the blood rushing to the bottom, and then this chick teases them with a big long broad story, like Game of Thrones style. Slices up slowly and wants to hear them scream. So when she gets the maximum scream, she slices off the neck and all the blood drips and this witch, is evil witch, satanic witch, is underneath with a bathtub collecting the blood and drinking it. Because that's adrenochrome, you didn't know. They want that fear and adrenaline rush. So it's probably not a young witch. It's probably an older witch who's doing this for a long time. And that's what's going on while you guys are having your Merry Christmas presents, you're having your birthday stuff, and you're ignoring everything what the hell is going on in reality. Pikachu gotta let you know what's really going down. Now some of you say that you know, you can't take Pikachu serious. Well, I'm gonna tell you the only reason why I'm alive to tell you this is because of these classes. Not because of you who's at home just, oh, praying, wishing, saying God bless, and you guys disappear because you want to do another Pony Pot on Mars, you want to go punt some Kahlo, you want to do some things. No, I need real people who want to go rescue kids, take out evil villains, confiscate the drugs, burn the evil shit so they can't take it anymore. You just can't pray for the gods. Oh, Jesus, come and save me. Oh, Jesus is dead. The Romans killed him. So what are you going to do about it? You're just going to bitch, complain, sit at home and do absolutely nothing. Pretend everything's all hunky-dory. But wait till it happens to your kid. Wait till it happens to your niece, your nephew, your son, your daughter, grandkid, and then it will be too late. Because now the best way to combat this is prevention. But once it already happens, now we're cap capturing the, the after image, the aftermath. Now if you didn't know what happens in a typical case, if you have joint custody and one of them is a perpetrator, the judge is not going to hear any of your evidence unless you got an evidential hearing. So you might not have all this legal stack of shit, but the judge won't take it until you get another hearing for evidence to be submitted. But that might take months, it might take forever. So you don't want to give the innocent victims, the kids, back to the perpetrator. Like the Ariel Sellers case, we're trying to prevent missing kids, death, STDs, or any bad shit from happening. Of course, I cannot say any names. We've got two active cases in Kapolei. Uh, and if you want to find this, some of these houses, you can look on the bedpage.com. This becomes a new backup for Craigslist and Backpage. And that's where they're doing adult human trafficking and smuggling. Because some of these girls, are, they said they're from Thailand, but obviously it's just fake ads. And you can find the parking lot. It's right across from Diamond Garcia's house in the Camping Spending Commission right across the element. You can go see it. And there's more stuff in Upper Makakilo and some other things, but I cannot say the details because obviously it's sensitive in nature. But I'm going to need your help, those that listen to you, those that I tag after the fact that I'm filming, to see what you're going to do about it. We need support, like I said, and see how things are going to flow. Because right now the system is screwed up. If that was your kid, you'd want me to do everything possible to rest your kid out of that situation and make sure they're safe. And let's see. Yes, Hilo Hospital. What I want to mention to all of you, because we have people in Hilo Hospital. So normally I want a big guy investigating all of this stuff, because that Hilo and Cohen, just to give you the background. Division 1 Hilo does not talk to Division 2. They keep things separate. And you got the rookies who are coming in, who are forced to work all the time and do all the bullshit, because we got the late night workers who work late night. They don't 
get along. Because the old old timers want to make the old t- overtime and blah 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 blah. But they're making all the young rookies do all the good work. Now, on Hilo, it's not like Oahu, it's a different county. If we're in an incident and you have your own personal vehicle, and let's say someone busts your own vehicle, breaks into it, and you're the cop, you have to pay for their own vehicle yourself. That's your POV, your personal owned vehicle. You know, yeah, you got some insurance, but you don't see the blue and whites like on Oahu as opposed to Big Island because they make the own county police officers pay with their own pocket money, which is not going to be enough if you're handing drug smugglers, human traffickers, mafia, KGB, Sinaloa, cartel, and all these other acronyms, which we're not even going to get into. Because if we rescue kids in Hilo, they're supposed to go automatic to Hilo Hospital because that's the closest. Right? But Hilo Hospital doctors and nurses are all on drugs. They're addicted to cocaine. I can confirm it. You can check it out the news that they got caught a nurse recently smuggling drugs, opium, and other things because all of them are on cocaine. I've never heard of them adding an additional bit since coronavirus happened. Josh Green's from Peru, so he's supposed to know better when he's the governor. If he could, you can tell you this. How come the governor's not doing shit? What about Lorraine Noe? What about Lor- uh, Ocasio? What about Laura Ocasio? What about all the other people who were there at the human trafficking event last year for Human Trafficking Awareness Day? Do you see them talking about it? No! You hear them say shit. Right now, I'm, I'm the only person in the Hawaiian Islands who's speaking about this openly. I'm telling you again, the only reason why I'm not is because of these glasses. Once I take these glasses off, we're going to go in blackouts and you're not going to see it. I want to enter not until mode because the kids are for the cakey and for the ladies. I didn't wear this for you, Pendejos. It's so I can have a cover story, just like Jesus. They killed Jesus. I realized that. They killed, they killed Dr. Martin Luther King. They killed JFK. They killed Gandhi. Whenever you get into this kind of realm, they're going to 86 your candy ass if you're not prepared for what's going to happen, which is a real untold hidden war. If you watch Operation Underground Railroad, or you are Tim Ballard, you can see it on the YouTube videos, and they only do foreign stuff, because they know how bad it is domestic. But yours truly is right here in the Hawaiian Islands, in the Hawaiian Kingdom, to take care of business here. I'm not going to wait for other people to come. Yeah, we need backup. Yeah, we need all this stuff. But we got some serious cases now. So if you're down at the pound, you know who to call. You know who to reach on Facebook, Instagram, it's Legendary Billionaire. And there's a lot of corruption, super going down. And I need strong people like you. People who care. People who give a shit, that are willing to risk their lives, to come out, do stakeouts, take out evil villains, capture resources, and we need a place for the kids to be safe to grow up. Because like I said, one house might have 7 to 12 kids. That's not normal for an average person to take in. If you normally, when we rescue a house, we're supposed to give them all to the hospital. Let's say Hilo Hospital, for example. But from there, they get analyzed and they get sent into the CWS system, which is corrupt as hell, and, and it gets and the process repeats. Because CWS gets paid more money every year for having more kids in the system. They get paid less for having less kids in the system. So their main objective is not to rescue kids. Their main objective is to keep on collecting the funds, to keep on their salaries going up, and all kind of bullshit going down under the guise of protecting PPP, blah, 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 acronym bullshit. So, I will send this as an email and a report. I will tag Miley Shima Bukuro, Darius Kila, Sergio Gates, everything I could say and right here in this handy dandy notebook, which I couldn't say in two minutes. Because there's no way you'll be able to process everything I have to say. Even Darius Killers told me to slow down. But it's not my problem that I talk too fast. It's my problem that you listen too slow. You cannot write notes fast enough because you haven't been in serious in this situation. Just to remind everybody, there's only one Native Hawaiian organization in the universe allowed to investigate human trafficking and drug smuggling according to the U.S. Department of Interior. That means we cleared the Hawaii, the Hawaii State Park, we also cleared the U.S. State Park to, to cover our opponent, just in case some people had bullshit to sell us. And obviously, you're not in the mix, you're not fighting, yours truly is, because I will be the lead investigator for this one, and you can't shoot the federal post office, as I'm just the messenger. But, we got some serious shit going down, and I need your help. For those of you listening out there, you can DM me, you could use supplies, we could use gear, we could use volunteers, we need an aftercare place for the cakey to keep them in a safe place. And we're gonna, we're gonna go old school. If this new Palapala doesn't work, which it isn't working, because Josh Green, 
I was going to appoint a new DHHL head, a new deal in our head. We know Gene Tomashiro got arrested illegally for digging a hole for planting coconuts. And Keldon Walton, when we look over the back report, says that he's supposed to be helping with them, but it says he was busted for digging a hole and introducing a new species. But it's a coconut on an island. He's not introducing a new species. Like, this is just BS reports. And why would you be fighting Gene Tomashiro when he got way bigger issues here? And it's because you only want to prosecute and execute and stuff that you can close, you know, to keep whatever your prosecution rate up, you know. It becomes facetious at this point. And just to let you know, the only party in March is going to be on January 17th, next year, 2023. Martin Luther King Jr. is on the Monday, the 16th, where they got, he got assassinated, right? Birthday. 17th is only party in March from the mausoleum to the palace, and obviously... Capital will be closed, and on Wednesday is Open Legislation Day. So if you Americans actually give a shit about your government, your country, you want to contest a straw man who's homo, you want to talk to all, all the representatives and complain, you can show up there. It is free. Usually on Open Legislation Day, it's the only day you get free food. Going to all these legislators, you know, most of the time are there in the meetings. But if you show up early, you visit all the offices, you go take pictures, which Pikachu will do, blah, 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 blah. And we'll see who's there. According to the report, Gene Thomas Hill, Dan Anderson, and a few other yeah, you plan to hold their ground. I'm not sure what they're going to do at the palace on the 18th. But you guys can watch it live, because Pikachu will be there once again. And we're going to see what's going down. Now, if you hear of any other sacrifices going down, or anything that's too legit to quit, give me a call, text me. I'll see you guys in cyberspace. May the force be with you always. Pikachu loves you. Pikachu.